Welcome to the Sunday School Lesson Review hosted by the pastor of New Bethel Baptist Church, Brother Lars Jordan. The subject of this week's lesson is, Blessing, Glory, Honor Forever. The scripture reading is coming from Revelation chapter 5, verses 6 through 14. Please, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. After you click the subscribe button, make sure you click the notification bell for future lessons. Hi, I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday school lesson for April the 29th 2018 is blessing, glory, and honor forever. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from Revelation, the fifth chapter. Our printed text is verses 6 through 14. And our background scripture is the first verse of this fifth chapter uh, is verses 1 through 14. Fifth chapter Printed text, verses 6 through 14, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 14 for a background scripture. And our lesson today is still dealing with this area of study for this quarter, acknowledging God and then all glory and honor. Acknowledging what we've been talking about the past few weeks is acknowledging God's supreme authority. In other words, admitting that he is real, he is true, and he is to be recognized as definitely being in existence. Those of us that know him have know the scripture, for without faith it is impossible to please God, for to come to him we must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him, uh, Hebrews eleven six, and 2 believe all the facts about God that are written for us in the scripture for us to recognize our God in the movement of his spirit all around us in the things that are happening and to understand that he sent his son to die for our sins. All the facts about God, that is how we acknowledge God. Our lesson today, still in this one prophetic book in the New Testament, Revelation. One of the best books to understand because it has its own outline in the first chapter. Jesus himself gave that outline. He told John there in the first chapter of Revelation, verse 19, he said, John, now write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Now, that is the, the entire outline of, of Revelation. What had John seen, the, the things that thou hast seen? John had just fallen down before the resurrected Lord, and, and he had seen Jesus. He had seen him, and along with other disciples, when Jesus resurrected from the grave. But now he was seeing the risen Savior as he had come back, even at, after he had ascended to heaven, to have this conversation with John here on the Isle of Patmos as John was it was exiled there because of teaching and preaching the gospel. John is an elderly man at this time, but he was not alone on this Isle of Patmos, even though in the in the physical and the natural man he was alone, but he had the spiritual uh, heavenly beings there with him. The the God himself, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, along with the host of heavenly angels. And John, he had seen the, the, the resurrected Lord. And then he was told by Jesus to write the things which are. The things which are in this book are written there in chapters 2 and chapter 3. It is the church history in its entirety as he talks about the seven churches of Asia Minor. So now we have those, the, the, the church history in its entirety, and then chapter four always comes after chapter three, and 
he's ushered into the throne room in heaven. In the throne room in heaven, he gets to see something else. We know that, that before you would send someone into to destroy something, you would take out your ambassadors, your people. You would move them out of harm's way. So John is ushered into the throne room, and it looks to us as he sees the church there in the throne room represented there in the 20 and 4 elders. It would seem like that to, to, to me, and I told you last week that that's kind of the position that we will take, and you'll see further with that with this lesson today. So now we, we are in this area, and... Today, we go from the fourth chapter into the fifth chapter. We're seen there in the throne room where there was one that sat in the midst on a throne that was that was the great throne, and, and, and it was a superior throne, yet there were 24 other thrones or seats around, which are th called thrones in the, in the Greek, and they were the inferior to that superior throne, and that's where the 20 and 4 elders sat there on the on the inferior thrones to the superior. So now that all that is happening, the worshiping and praising going on in heaven, but now there's something someone else here in the midst. And that's where we get to in this fifth chapter of Revelation. We had seen the, the resurrected Lord, we have seen church history, now chapters four through twenty-two are the things which shall happen hereafter are, as you know, the hereafter or after these things is the metatalta in the Greek. Verse 1 of this fifth chapter says, it's in our background scripture, it says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side. Well, we know this to be a scroll. We, we had seen uh, situations like this before. Daniel was told to close up the book, and it was seen that this would be the book that Daniel was told to close because it wasn't for his day. He wouldn't understand those things. But this book was written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And verse 2 says, And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? This, this, uh, this strong angel, we don't know who this angel is. Some say that this may have been Gabriel because that's what his name means. But we see here, this was a strong angel that proclaimed this, who is worthy to open the, the, this, this lamb, this, this book rather, and, and to loose the seals of this book. And verse three says, and no man in heaven, this would be shocking, and this would this would bring sorrow to the hearts of all that would be listening. Now, us we've we've heard this and read it so many times that it that that we know the outcome of it. But to John, they're brought into the throne room in the presence of of all of this activity that is going on, and it seems like at this point, such a hopeful situation. All of a sudden, there is no hope. Remember last week, we told you this is a book of hope. It scares the, the life out of a non-believer, but it is hope for the believer. It, when, when we believe, it's, it, it is hope for us. When we believe in the, the finished work that Jesus Christ accomplished at Calvary's cross, this is a book of hope for us. And we can look back here to Revelation and see the church coming back with the Lord to, to rule and reign in the millennial kingdom forever being with the Lord, as Paul said there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the church would always be with him because the church is the bride of Christ. But no man, that would seem like all hope is gone. No man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look their own. None of them were able to open the book nor look at the book, look, look in, in the book, the things that were written in the book. And this is how it left John feeling. Even here in heaven, even in the presence of God, John began to weep. He said, I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and read the book, neither to look thereon. No one was found that was worthy. When they searched high and they searched low, they had seen many, many great figures beforehand, even up until this time. They had seen many that were great 
on the earth that it, that had risen up before John that and and we know about about Moses he was the great lawgiver of God God loved Moses he said Moses you want more of me than any other man so if you stand in the cleft of the rock I'll pass by and let you see my hinder parts David you're after my own heart, but David and Moses were not even found worthy. Elijah called down fire, but not worthy to open the books. None of those were found worthy, but look here. Look here. Verse 5 says, and one of the elders said unto me, weep not. One of the elders, we don't know which one. It doesn't, it doesn't tell us which one of them. It says, weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. The, the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now, Jacob, when Jacob was getting getting ready to, to leave this, this earth, when he was re getting ready to die, he called his sons together, his 12 sons together there in Genesis 49. And when he got to this one that didn't seem like he had such a good history about him, he would do he would do some bad things in his life. But when he got to that one, he said, thou art a lion's web. That was something special about him. And, and this particular person, Judah, that he would be the one to whom the Christ would come through, the Messiah would come through. These things will not leave from depart. The scepter shall not depart from thy hand. In other words, this man would be powerful. There, verse 9 and 10 of the 49th chapter of Genesis. So now the lion of the tribe of Judah is what, what the elder told John would be able to open the, open the book and to take away the seals, and he will be the one to loose the seals, rather. And then our printed text. It says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb. Now we're, we're introduced to another figure here in heaven. Obviously, John wasn't able to see him before, but now is the time to see him. Now, in the fourth chapter, we didn't see him there. We, we got to see the Spirit of the Lord there. God the, 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 the Father and God the Spirit was there. The sevenfold efforts of the Spirit was also represented there in the fourth chapter. But now we get to see there stood a lamb, not, not a lion. What, why, why is it not a lion? Well, well, they, 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 the lion is, is humble. He is humble, and that's why he was able to, to open it. He had fulfilled all of those things that needed to be fulfilled, the requirements of man, because the, the, the seals, the, those things that were locked down were, were about man. So now he would come in power when he comes back to reign and rule. So he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he does have the power, and we'll see that in the description, descriptions of him. But now, when John looks, he saw a lamb. This, the, the Greek word tells us there, a, a little lamb. A lamb, as it had been slain. This lamb that had been slain? Well, slain had been killed, had, 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 had died at one point but was now alive, standing in the midst of them. This lamb had been slain, redeemed man with, with his being slain. We know that, and all of that will come out here in just a minute. Having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth, uh, the omniscience of God, uh, meaning there in, in completion, in, in, in its entirety. Complete power and complete knowledge is what this particular lamb would have. He, he stands here in, in power and strength, having authority to rule 
even though he is a lamb. He has the, these horns, these, these, these seven horns, not actually seven horns, but that's what is meant by it, it, telling about his power, the strength and power that he would have and authority to rule. And the eyes represent the divine knowledge that he would have, sees all, omniscience is what, what the, we, is, is telling us here at this time. And verse 7 says, And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne. He didn't, he didn't hesitate. He came and took the book. This, this, this person and that had been marred more than any other man is what Isaiah told us in Isaiah 52. This, this lamb that had been slain, marred more than anybody, anyone else, any other man, now walks up to the one sitting on the throne, the one that was sitting on the throne that was superior to the inferiors. And he came to that throne and he took the book out of his right hand that sat on the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and 20 elders fell down before the lamb. Now they all fall down, not just the, the four and 20 elders at this time, but now even the four beasts uh, or the four living creatures is what we understand is what it's talking about there. They fall down, all fall down before this lamb. Having every one of them, look at what, what they had. They, every one of them had harps. Harps meant, were meant to accompany someone that was singing a song. The music comes and they, they were able to accompany those that were singing that, that had a song in their heart. And then the golden vows of, of odors are the incense, as we understand, which are the prayers of the saint. Didn't just tell us that these were golden vows of incense. It went on to describe to us the figurative speaking of this, what it actually really means. It tells us that this is the prayers of the saints. So this would also make us understand that this was probably talking about the church the, the, at, at this time. The church raptured out, taken out of the world before God pours out his, his wrath on a Christ-rejecting world. On, uh, the, those that times time and a half, the three and a half years times two, the tribulation and the great tribulation would happen. But now the church is in the, in the throne room here. John was seeing some things that was awesome. And the prayers of the saints, the prayers here lifted up before God. This is something that we weren't told in the fourth chapter. Now we're seeing what they were holding. All of them had a harp and all of them had these prayers of the saints. Now, they weren't the ones to answer the prayers. God was the one to answer the prayer. In other words, God doesn't need anyone to help him be God, but he is God. And, and they had, they were able to be a part of this, to have these prayers, to, to bow down before God with them. But they bowed down here before the Lamb. And look at this. The harps were able to accompany. And they sung a new song. This is not the old one. And this would help us also to understand that this is probably the church because no one else other than the redeemed would have a song to sing like this. Angels wouldn't have a song to sing like this because they were never, they, the, the blood didn't have to be shed for them to be redeemed. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals. First of all, you're able to, you're worthy to take the book. You are the one that, that, that is worthy to take this book and to open the seals and thereof, uh, thereof, for thou was slain. Here we go again, always describing him as the one that was slain. And well, we just said, marred more than any other man, as Isaiah said in Isaiah 52. Thou was slain and has redeemed us. Now, some try to change that, the, the, that particular wording right there, but the KJV or the King James Version does say redeemed us, which helps you to understand that these were people that were recipients of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. The, so it says redeemed us to God by their blood out of every kindred. Who all was, was, 
was was redeemed. He said, out of every kindred, every nation is is what he's talking about here. Not not just every every kindred, but every tongue. Every one that speaks another language, every language was included in this. Every the, the gospel message had gone out to all, and all of those, those were the prayers that were before the people. Those that had, had asked Jesus Christ to come into their life, and those were before God, and God was honoring the promise, and, and now these people had bowed down before the Lamb because he was the one that was worthy. It was his blood that was shed, and now it says every and every tongue, and every people, I'm putting the every in front of all of these, every people, which is only trying to help us to, uh, to understand that this was offered to everyone, not only every people, but every nation. It went out to all the same message. This is the one that was slain. This is the one that is worthy because it was his own blood that he took into the holy of holies and sprinkled on the mercy seat and people's sins were forgiven if they trusted him to take away their sins verse 10 says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and we shall reign on earth in the millennial kingdom he has made unto us to our God, kings and priests, made people, just normal people that look at ourselves as just standard and regular people. We, as he has, has put us in a different light before God. We don't, we don't see ourselves like this, and it's not for us to see ourselves like this because we'll walk around acting like we have a halo over our head, but this is the way that he sees us because of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And verse verse 11 says, And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels. This is John, still listening, still seeing what's happening here, still in the throne room here in, in heaven. He said, And I beheld, I looked and heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. A merriment of, of voices that were, were singing here to, only to say that they're too numerable for him to count is what John is trying to help us to understand there. And all of them were, were around about and they were, they were voicing all of these things. Knowing that we saw last week where they were saying, holy, 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 and the elders would, would bow down and cast their crown before, before God, before that, 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 that one that was sitting on the throne, and the, which, which was the Father. But now we see that there is praise going up and all around. And there is a special song being sung in the midst of all the other singing that was coming from those that have been redeemed. And verse 12 says, saying with a loud voice, worthy, trustworthy, you are, you are worthy, you have, you have, have, have overcome, you are the one that, that is lifted up, you are the one that, that is ready, that should receive all of this, all the, the glory, the blessing, the honor, worthy is what, what he's saying here, is the lamb, all of these uh, things are ascribed to you, now saying with this loud voice, worthy is the lamb, this lamb that was slain, that was slain to receive power. He was he was worthy to receive power. Receive there, which is labano in the Greek, which means to gain possession of. You're you're the one that is worthy to gain possession of this power, to get hold of, to to procure it or obtain this particular power. This you you are are worthy to to receive this power what is this power this power this same word we've seen this word before but when jesus christ himself was talking there after he had had came back and was getting ready to board a cloud and go into heaven there in the first chapter of Acts, as dr luke wrote there that he said that you will receive power 
After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power there was dunamis. In other words, that's where we got our word dynamite. That would be something that would be explosive in you. And here is where we receive our explosive nation, nature from when we share the gospel message. Jesus Christ, he is the, the one that has this power. And he gives this power to us to share this gospel message. The, this power, dunamis, means miraculous power or power with the ability the, to use it in the way that it is needed to be used. Power, dunamis. And then you not only receive just power, but also these are the seven things that you are worthy to receive. Power and riches. Riches, platos in the Greek, which means wealth uh, or even value bestowed upon. You are valuable to the church nation, to everyone that has accepted you as Lord and Savior. You are the creator. You you are the one that, that John talked about there in the first chapter when he said, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. So it was, it was this person that has riches, he, uh, value is bestowed upon him. And not only that, but also wisdom. Wisdom is having knowledge. But is, wisdom does not stand alone as just having knowledge. Wisdom is having knowledge with the mindset and the ability to exercise that knowledge in a way that is, is, is good, to, to use it for, for the good. It, it, and that is Sophia in the Greek, the wisdom here, this word, the ability to use this knowledge that, that you have. Not only and not only wisdom, but also strength. Strength. This this word strength is ikos in the, in the Greek means might and power. You got might. You have this might along with that word dunamis. That mighty dynamite is what what we would come to here. And and honor also. Time. Spelt just like our word time in, in the Greek there, which means to esteem or esteem at, to the highest degree is what our Lord and Savior would be at this time. This is what they're saying when they're, when they're talking here to, to the Lamb, when they're, they're praising the Lamb, when they're singing this song, they're, they're singing this to him, the honor and now glory, which is Doxa or splendor, the the radiance, the light, the the things that come from him are radiated out on people. They know that he is a, a deity. He is worthy of the glory that he received, and also blessing. Now, blessing the word that blessing there could sometimes sadden us if we only understood the word in the Greek. Because we, when we hear the word eulogy, we're usually talking about a funeral. But when this is eulogia, which means to talk about someone in a good way, to say something good about someone, to speak praises or adoration about someone. These are the things that he was worthy to receive here at this time. Saying again, reading verse number 12, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. This list would be condensed here in just a moment, but all of these things are are the sevenfold thing blessings that he was to receive, or, or, or things that he was worthy to receive, rather. Verse 13 says, and every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and such are in the sea, and all that are all that are in them, heard I saying, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sit upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. 
Now, this would kind of sound like what the Apostle Paul was talking about there in, in Philippians 2, 10 and 11, when he says that it, it doesn't matter whether they're, 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 they're saints or sinners. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they're, they're believers or not. There will come a day when every knee will bow. That, that's things in heaven and things on earth and things underneath the earth. And, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Th those things are going to happen. And, and that's basically what, what is being said here as John seeing all of these things happen and now saying that, that the blessings are, are he's worthy to receive these. These things are coming up on him from all of these voices. Every creature is saying this, that saying, I heard him saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that, that sitteth upon the throne, not just to the father sitting there in the midst of the throne, in the middle throne, in that, in that superior seat, but also to the lamb. How long? Forever. Verse 14 says, and the four be said, amen, or this is a trustworthy statement. This is true. This is, this is something that is definitely going to happen. Say, uh, and the four and 20 elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever. Now we see the four and 20 elders fall down again. They had already fallen down one time. Even in this chapter, as we saw them fall down in the fourth chapter, but but now again they fall down, as the four beasts or the four living creatures say, "Thou art trustworthy. Everything you said is true, and it's going to happen." John gets to see this in the throne room: the blessing, the glory, and the honor bestowed upon the Lord, and these are things that's going to happen forever. We as the church will get to praise him and lift him up forever. The blessings are the praises that are going up, saying wonderful things about him. Father God, we do thank you today for the study of your word. And Father, we pray that this word will simmer on our hearts and minds and give us hope for that brighter tomorrow that we will share when we are with our Lord forevermore. Father, we do pray that even now that you will search our hearts Forgive us of sin. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining the Sunday School Lesson Review. Hope to see you next week. God bless you all.